my friends, we're going to go over the Van't Hoff equation by deriving it. We're going to solve some popular exam problems and go over some graphing. So this is like an all-in-one video for the Van't Hoff equation. Make sure to watch every example because it's for sure going to be on your midterm or final exam in some form. So we're going to start off with a simple derivation. I do have other derivations, but I like this one a lot. We're going to start off with this famous equation, the change in standard Gibbs energy G is equal to negative RT long K. And another awesome equation, the change in Gibbs energy equals the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. This is the Gibbs energy equation. You notice the left-hand sides are the same. That means the right-hand sides have to be equal to each other. So we'll equate them to each other right here. And then we'll divide by negative RT to give us the Van Hoff equation. <laughs> this is what I call in its graph form. And we're going to revisit this later. But I'm going to show you a couple other important forms. So if we take the derivative with respect to T, and we assume that the enthalpy change and the entropy change are constant. So what that means is it doesn't matter what temperature you do the reaction at. Delta H won't change and delta S won't change. Okay, it, they do change, but for this Van't Hoff equation, we have to assume that they're constant. So if we do that, we're left with this differential form. And this makes sense from here. So we're taking the derivative with respect to T, so we didn't do anything on the left-hand side. This is a constant, so we're taking a derivative of 1 over T, which is negative 1 over T squared, and the negatives cancel, so it's positive. And this is a constant, so the derivative of a constant is 0 which is what we have here. Now we're going to get this into a more useful integrative form by multiplying both sides by dt and then integrating to give us this. And this is state 1 and state 2. And this integral might look complicated, but imagine ln k is just x. And the integral of dx is x. So if we integrate this, this is ln kind of long k, but we've got to remember our limits of integration. And this is the integral of 1 over t squared, because everything else is constant, which is negative 1 over t, to give us the integrated form in all its glory. <laughs> so a brief discussion about the conditions. It compares the equilibrium constant at different temperatures. So this is very important. I hope you're listening. The temperature doesn't change. So it's not like this is an initial temperature and this is a final temperature. No, 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 no. It's like, imagine you do the reaction twice. Okay, imagine that. And at one temperature, we establish one equilibrium. If we do the reaction again at another temperature, that'll give us another equilibrium constant. So it's like we're comparing two different states. We're requiring that this is under standard state, so a constant pressure of one bar. And we're requiring that because of this equation right here. This has to be under a standard change in Gibbs energy. We're also requiring that the change in entropy and change in enthalpy are temperature independent, so that we can do the derivative right here to get us this differential form. Uh, we're assuming, of course, PV work only, so no electrical or other types of work, and for a closed system. Alrighty, y'all. That's a quick derivation and the conditions. Now we're going to go over some very important exam problems, so make sure you don't miss these. And pause the video, see how well you can do this on your own, and then unpause it. And I'm curious to see how many people can get this on the first try. Okay, here we are. So for the following reaction, the equilibrium constant is 0 0.534 at 960 Kelvin and 1.571 at 1260 Kelvin. And the question is asking us, what's the enthalpy of the reaction? And we have the chemical reaction right here. So what are we given? Well, we're given a K1, right? We're given a T1, we're given a K2, and a T2 as well, and we're trying to solve for this here. Now, we need to solve for the standard enthalpy of the reaction. It doesn't say that in here, and often these questions omit that, but that is kind of an important point. So this is the change in standard enthalpy of the reaction of what we're solving for. At this point, we're going to look at the Van't Hoff equation in its integrated form. And we literally have everything we need except for the unknown. So we're going to plug in our values. This is our K2. This is our K1. We want to choose the R that has joules in it, not units of pressure, but joules, because we want delta H to be in units of joules or kilojoules. And then we put in our temperatures. Make sure you have the right T2s and T1s to the right order of K2s, K1s. Anyways, if you plug this into your calculator, you get a standard change in enthalpy of 36,174 joules per mole, or we like to report this in kilojoules per mole. I use two sig figs down here because there's two sig figs here. Uh, but anyways, here we are. And note that this is a positive number, so you may be asked to explain if the answer makes sense. Positive means it's endothermic. So what's happening is energy drives the reaction to the right. Therefore, higher temperature shifts this to the right. The equilibrium constant is products over reactants, so we'll have more products, less reactants. K will go higher if we increase the temperature, which is what we're seeing here. 
already y'all another very important exam problem you won't want to miss this one so pause the video see if you can go through this and we'll begin the vapor pressure of dry ice is 672 torr at negative 80 degrees celsius and 1486 torr at negative 70 degrees celsius and the question is asking us to determine the molar heat of sublimation now let's look at what's going on here we have carbon dioxide which is dry ice in solid form is in equilibrium with the gas so when you see these pressures here imagine that you have a closed system and you have so much solid it doesn't completely sublime into a gas so at equilibrium the pressure of this gas is this pressure right here at these various temperatures that's kind of what's going on so we have this equilibrium between the solid and the gas now to solve this we're going to use the Vantoff equation in its integrated form the one we just derived here you can solve this using the clausius clapeyron equation which I did in this video just click up here if you want to see how I solved it using the clausius clapeyron equation but in the spirit of this video we're going to use the Vantoff off equation. So from here, we, we're in a bit of a pickle, right? Because we have pressures and we need equilibrium constants. So we're going to get the equilibrium constants from the pressures. And the equilibrium constant is equal to the activities of the products over the reactants. We'll assume that the activity of this is 1, so that the equilibrium constant is, and this is P is for pressure, is equal to the pressure of the CO2 divided by the standard pressure. This standard pressure is very important to include, okay? This is 1 bar, standard pressure of 1 bar. We need it in here. We just can't use the this pressure right here. So if we solve for K2 over K1, that's going to be pressure 2 over the standard pressure and pressure 1 over the standard pressure. Standard pressure cancels out, so it's going to equal P2 over P1. So that's cool. So we can substitute that in. K2 over K1 is going to be P2 over P1. And if this is our P2, 1486 Tor, we'll put that in. 672 Tor, we'll plug that one in. And our temperature so if this is P1, then negative 80 degrees Celsius is 193.15 in Kelvin. We need to use these temperatures in Kelvin. Then negative 70 degrees Celsius is 203.15 Kelvin. And we want to use the R that has joules in it, 8.3145. If we plug all of that in and kind of do some algebra, we get a change in standard enthalpy of sublimation or the molar heat of sublimation of 25,890 joules per mole. In kilojoules per mole, it's 25.9 kilojoules per mole. Again, does this make sense? This is a positive number. Positive means it's endothermic. Should this be endothermic? Well, it's endothermic, which means it takes energy to convert the solid into a gas, which makes sense. Okay, now one of the most popular exam problems is to interpret a graph, and this is an example right here. Calculate the change in standard enthalpy of the reaction based on the following graph for this chemical reaction right here, and we're given what the slope is equal to. So to determine the change in standard enthalpy of the reaction, we're going to look at the Vantoff equation and I'm going to look at the graph form. Remember that form that I derived just earlier? Well, this is it right here. And if you compare this form to a straight line, y equals mx plus b, you'll see that m is the slope. So the slope is this part right here, which is negative the change in enthalpy over, over the gas constant r, and that equals the slope, which is what's given to us here. So if we solve for the change in standard enthalpy, we just move the r over, use the r that has joules, plug in our numbers, and we're given a value of negative 2.02 times 10 to the 5 joules per mole, or negative 202 kilojoules per mole. It's negative which means the reaction is exothermic. So energy is being released as heat as the reaction proceeds to the right. An endothermic graph is when the slope goes the other way. So the delta H is going to be greater than zero. Alrighty, y'all. So very important. If you have problems that establish equilibrium at different temperatures, you'll use the integrated form right here. And you basically plug in and solve for the unknown. But to find the equilibrium constant, you may need to calculate it like I did with the pressures or using this equation right here. And a graph of ln k versus 1t is a straight line using the Vantoff equation with slope of negative delta h over r. If you really want to know this topic solid, then you should know how to graph the Vantoff equation. I have a short video right here that you should check out and hang in there y'all. I know thermo is not an easy subject but the more problems you do the better you'll get and you can survive. Cheers.